should women have the vote? That was the issue that was hotly debated for a century and a half as women learned to organize and raise the issue of equality. I'm Linda McShannock, collections curator at the Minnesota Historical Society. Today we're going to look at some items from the collection that relate to women's suffrage. In 1848, a small group of women, including Elizabeth Petty Stanton and Lucretia Mott, organized the first women's rights convention in Seneca Falls, New York. Suffrage became one issue in their platform of women's rights. Susan B. Anthony joined the national movement in 1852. In the 1850s, Minnesota's early suffrage supporters, including Harriet Bishop, St. Paul's first public school teacher, voiced their opinions on women's roles in the home and in public. St. Cloud's outspoken newspaper publisher, Jane Gray Swisshelm, wrote, a woman ought to meddle in politics. Not everybody agreed. In the time of separate spheres, when a woman's place was in the home and men's roles were limited to business affairs, a majority of the population believed that giving the vote to women would mean the end of family harmony. Women and men who supported votes for women countered with their own views. Ethel Edgerton Hurd was a forceful leader of the largest suffrage organization in Minnesota, the Political Equality Club of Minneapolis. Influential members included Clara Ulan, who was the organization's final president and who expanded the visibility of suffrage organizations through her leadership. In the early 20th century, the movement was infused with enthusiasm. By 1919, some 30,000 Minnesota women had taken a stand for suffrage. Support for the movement to grant women the right of full citizenship expanded with the formation of the Scandinavian Woman Suffrage Association and the Workers' Equal Suffrage League. African-American activist Nellie Griswold Francis founded St. Paul's Every Woman Suffrage Club. Early leaders were joined by a younger generation who were willing to create public spectacles to win this support. They held mass meetings, handed out countless leaflets, sponsored parades, plays, lectures, and teas, anything to get the arguments for women's suffrage before the public. Women were encouraged to show your colors by wearing bright yellow ribbons, the suffrage color. Just as pink is recognizable today as the color for breast cancer awareness, yellow was adopted as a color associated with the suffrage movement. In 1914, the Minnesota suffragists planted yellow flower gardens to keep the movement alive during the summer doldrums. The Society's collection includes the archives of several local suffrage organizations, the banners they carried in their marches, and the badges, buttons, and ribbons worn by their delegates. Minnesota became the 15th state to ratify the 19th Amendment, which prohibits each state and the federal government from denying any citizen the right to vote based on that citizen's sex. On August 26, 1920, the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution became the law of the land. Because of the passage of this amendment, men and women have equal status as voters in all public elections. Exercise those rights and make your voice heard. 